ladies and gentlemen good day and welcome to q2 fy24 conference call of sigachi industries limited as a reminder all participant lines will be in the listen only mode and there will be an no opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes should you need assistance during this conference call please signal an operator by pressing star and zero on your touchstone phone and now hand the conference over to mr amit thakkar from velorum advisors thank you and over to you sir good evening everyone and a very warm welcome to you all my name is amit thakkar from velorum advisors we represent the investor relations of sigachi industries limited on behalf of the company i would like to thank you all for participating in the company's earnings call for the second quarter and the first half of financial year 2024 before we begin let me mention a short cautionary statement some of the statements made in today's earnings call may be forward looking in nature such forward looking statements are subject to risks and uncertainties which could cause actual results to differ from those anticipated such statements are based on management's belief as well as assumptions made by and information currently available to the management audiences are cautioned not to place any undue reliance on these forward looking statements in making any investment decisions The purpose of today's earnings call is purely to educate and bring awareness about the company's fundamental business and a financial quarter under review. Now, I would like to introduce you to the management participating in today's earnings conference call and give it over to them for their opening remarks. We have with us Mr. Amit Raj Sinha, Managing Director and Chief Executive Officer, Mr. OS Reddy, Chief Financial Officer. I will now hand it over to Mr. Amit for his opening remarks. Thank you and over to you sir. Very good evening everybody. It's a pleasure to welcome you to the earnings conference call for the second quarter and first half of the financial year 2024. In the interest of some of the people who are new to the company, let me first start by giving a brief overview of the company after which Mr. OS Reddy our CFO will brief you on the financial performance for the quarter under review. Sigachi was incorporated in the year 1989. Today we are one of the leading manufacturers of microcrystalline cellulose in the world. Our company manufactures high quality cellulose based excipients which predominantly find usage in the pharmaceutical supplement and the food industry. The company has created a niche in manufacturing highly innovative pre-formulated excipients and 60 plus widely used excipients of international quality standards apart from giving customized solutions. from our state of the art r&d facility we ensure continuous innovation to efficiently meet evolving customer demands we have two manufacturing facilities in gujarat and two in telangana from where we ensure supply chain reliability for our customers across the globe our total capacities for this facility are more than 13800 tons per annum which we are further enhancing by ongoing capex to approximately 21000 metric tons per annum We also have an API unit in Karnataka, which has been acquired few months back. The process of integration is on. We at Sigachi have a global sales and distribution network and exporting to more than 60 countries across Asia, Australia, American continent, Europe, and the Middle East. Now I request our CFO to give you a brief on the financial performance. After which I will give you an operational highlight for the quarter. Over to you, Mr. Ovest Reddy. Thank you, sir. Good evening, everyone. Let me first brief you on the financial performance for the Q2 of the financial year 2024. The operating income for the quarter was around rupees 99 crores, representing an increase of about 20.2 percent year on year. EBITDA reported was rupees 21 crores.
increase of 3.63%, increasing from 7,051 tons to 7,307 metric tons in H1 FY24. Sales of the products increased uh, to INR uh, 166.4 crores from previous uh, corresponding half year of 149.9 crores. Company is constantly, thrive, is constantly thriving to improve upon its R&D capabilities and cost-effective manufacturing processes and thereby remain a manufacturer of choice with highest quality standards. Our focus is on high margin yielding product mix and cost effective manufacturing processes. Effective management of inventory would result in increased EBITDA and profitability over the coming quarters. That's it from my side. Thank you very much. We'll now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on their touchstone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and 2. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. Participants, you may press star and 1 to ask a question. The first question is from the line of Rajesh Chen from NB Investments. Please go ahead. Uh, good afternoon. Thank you for the opportunity. Uh, so my first question is: uh, the employee costs have gone up uh, on the standalone basis. Um, is it due to the the OEM part of the job that we do, or is it for any other reasons? Yeah. Thank you, Mr. Rajesh. Uh, this is uh, uh, on the account of it's a combination. Windham it is increasing. Windham mainly on uh, manpower based uh, uh, services are being provided. That's why Windham is increasing. That is one of the factor. And also we have uh, OTC and generics are there. Those also mostly manpower. Uh, this thing is there because we don't have manufacturing facility. We are uh, getting it manufacturing the uh, our uh, required uh, medicines through the outsource. That is outsourced. And uh, the next uh, major element is uh, manpower cost. Because of these things, uh, it is increased. And in uh, going uh, forward, it may come down a little. Hey, sir, uh, compared to Q1 also, Q1 we were around 12.8 crores, and uh, Q2 is 14.73. So any particular thing why this has again gone up so much? Uh, that is uh, mainly one of these two factors are there. Maybe it is too. So you are saying, uh, you are trying to say that it is 14 crores per quarter is what a steady state employee cost going forward. Ah, yes, yes. Going forward. Okay, sure. Fourth quarter. Oh. I would just like to uh, additionally add here, Mr. Rajesh Jain, uh, that, yeah. uh, you know, uh, the newly acquired API facility, uh, of course, uh, comes in with a certain level of employee cost. And uh, there uh, we are still working on seeing what is the best product portfolio mix uh, to have a, a stable ongoing revenue. So uh, you will see that uh, in terms of absolute numbers, uh, there might be a slight increase beyond even 14.72 because uh, the Q2 complete all the three months, uh, the uh, acquired facility was not in our books. It has only come in uh, later. So uh, I, I would say that uh, this in absolute terms would go up slightly, but uh, overall I believe in percentage terms, the sales would increase and in percentage terms, this will drop at a later quarter. Uh, sir, uh, just for my idea, this APA business is under a subsidiary, right? That's right. Yes, yes. That's right. Uh, so I was asking for the standalone, sir, not for the consolidated. Yes, yes. Consolidate, I can understand this new APA business also would have added the, you know, the employee. No, yes. actually, uh, what I'm not able to understand now is, I'm asking you whatever you said, the converse of that. In the sense, uh, the consolidate margins are better, improved, whereas Standalone, it is, uh, you know, gone down. So does it mean that your API business, uh, the margins are better than the standalone? 
Uh, no, so it's not that we only have API business as our subsidiary. Uh, we also no. have uh, our subsidiary in uh, Sigachi Mina in uh, the Middle East and uh, Sigachi US. Uh, Sigachi okay. US has been doing fairly well because uh, there are certain demands which have picked up and certain uh, stocks which have been cleared out in, at our customers and so more stocks have been in uh, use. So I believe uh, the prime reason for the consolidated figure to be better is on account of uh, the subsidiaries doing well and among the subsidiaries I would uh, put it at Sigachi US. Oh, oh. So that, that is the main reason, not the API one. Uh, API, of course, has a contribution, but I would say uh, it is not really uh, the main backbone. Okay, fair enough. Sir, I think you have given us a target of around 60 crores during the current year yes. for, uh, you know, in the API business. Now, I thought uh, the, the difference between the consolidated and uh, the standalone is only the API, where it was showing 20 crores. Uh, is it possible to share us what is the, uh, the quarter sales for the API business? Um, yeah. CFO, do you have a breakup? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. API business, sir, uh, only first August onwards, sir, uh, that is uh, has come into our uh, subsidiary. It has become our subsidiary. And August and September, uh, both put together around uh, 7.5 crores is the top line is there. Okay. And uh -huh. not contributed much. So are you confident of achieving the 60 crores within this uh, so uh, financially, we are, uh, we are working towards it, sir. Uh, of course, uh, there are certain integration issues, but uh, you know we have given ourselves a stretch target of 60 crores, and we are fairly confident that uh, we would be able to uh, get it on track. Okay, uh, sir. Uh, just to harping on the standalone margins, uh, the margins are down mainly due to this employee cost being higher. Is that is uh, correct understanding? Yes, yes, the major element is uh, employee cost only. Employee cost having, you know, having a higher contribution. Yes, yes. Okay. So, the uh, second is regarding your CapEx, what is the status of one is MCC plant? Uh, second is uh, the CCS uh, in regard, what is the status of the upper one? Uh, in terms of uh, our MCC plant expansion, uh, we are on track. Uh, by the end of uh, this Q3, uh, we should commence our uh, commissioning activities. So uh, in the Q4, we will have sales uh, which will be showing on the balance sheet. In terms of our uh, CCS expansion, uh, we are expecting to get the environmental clearance by December 2023. So uh, it was expected in November, but I believe that there is a slight delay in the committee. So uh, we are expecting that by December 2023, the uh, environmental clearance for the site should be in hand for us. And uh, thereafter, we will immediately commence uh, the civil works for the site. Okay. Okay, sir. Thank you very much and wish you all the best. Thank you, Mr. Jay. Thank you. Thank you. Participants, you may press star and one to ask a question. Ladies and gentlemen, you may press star and one to ask a question. Next question is from the line of Rahil Shah from Crown Capital Partners. Please go ahead. Uh, hello, sir. Good afternoon. Um, with regards to the second half, uh, so how do you see it panning out? Uh, what kind of growth do you expect this year and next year, along with your EBITDA margins? Any um, outlook you'd like to share? What will lead to this? What will lead to a good growth? So if you can share some highlights on that, please. Uh, so, uh, uh, Mr. Shah, uh, I would say that uh, uh, a 25% increase in the top line uh, should be a fair bet uh, for our excipient business, excipient and the current running business. Uh, over and above that, if I uh, club in uh, the API business, uh, that, that is an additional one. Uh, in terms of margin, I believe uh, we should be comfortable uh, on the positive side of 20% uh, EBITDA all throughout. Well, may I request to unmute your line and go with a question, please? Hello, yes, yeah, sorry. Um, so do you uh, have the same expectations for the next year as well, by FY25? How do you see the market? Uh, any any broader uh, view? So uh, for FY25, I think it's still uh, 
uh, more than a quarter away. So uh, giving out expectations at this moment, I think, would be a bit too early. Uh, probably in the next earning calls, we should be able to give you a broad, uh, you know, the stretch budget of what we are looking at uh, from uh, our business. Right, right. And um, in the previous question, I also like asked what will uh, like drive the growth. So what, what? Uh, so how do you see this? Uh, you know, which which particular segments or? So uh, broadly, the growth would be driven by our uh, pharmaceutical vertical, wherein uh, our uh, new capacities will come into force. Uh, over and above that, uh, our uh, the API vertical uh, API uh, division also should uh, bring in a reasonable level of revenue. So uh, that should also drive our growth and contribute towards our uh, overall business in the pharmaceutical vertical. So it should all be pharma. All pharma. Okay, got it. Okay, thanks, and all the best. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, you may press star and one to ask a question. Next question is from the line of Ankur, individual investor. Please go ahead. Good evening, everyone. Uh, my question is that we had a guidance of about the line is of... not clear. Can you please speak through the handset? Sure. Uh, so we have we have given a guidance about a revenue of uh, 400 crores for this year. Uh, are you still giving the same guidance? Uh, yes, yes, Mr. Ankur. Uh, we continue to have uh, that particular guidance. So that would be an increase of about 40% uh, revenue uh, quarter and quarter. Is that correct, sir? 40% uh, increase? Yeah, because uh, let's say in case the guidance is for 400 crores. Yeah. So for the next uh, quarter, revenue should be somewhere about 140 crores, the top line. Uh, I'm I'm not this sure. Quarter, yeah, this quarter, uh, uh, yeah, Mr. Ankur, uh, this quarter uh, we have crossed 100 uh, crores. Next quarter, uh, this our uh, uh, API turnover also will be added. And then MCC also will do better. Because our expanded capacities will come into force in fourth quarter, especially. Yeah, that is what what I was uh, hesitant upon since you said that earlier that third quarter we'll get the revenue from the uh, business. But now, in case you're guiding for fourth quarter, and uh, 400 crores was the top line minus 85 and 99, so we will have to uh, cover about 210 crores in the next two quarters. Yes. So is that still achievable, sir? Yeah, it is achievable. In this quarter itself, we have crossed uh, 100 crores. We have, we have reached 100 crores. Third yes. quarter, uh, additionally, we get uh, API business. And uh, in fourth quarter, additional capacities also will come into place. That's why that is an easily achievable uh, this thing. We hope uh, we'll come. One thing more, sir, can, can we throw some light on the joint venture uh, in MENA? Higachi Arabia, what is, what is that we want to achieve and what prospects do we have there? Uh, yes, uh, that's a very good question, Ankur. Uh, I think uh, you have uh, picked up the right one. <laughs> so uh, the, the joint venture with our uh, Saudi partner, uh, SNP, um, you know, Saudi National Projects and Investments, uh, is a, a very ambitious project uh, with a very ambitious and good partner of Saudi. Uh, they are very uh, renowned and a, uh, a big partner to have in Saudi, primarily on account of uh, the kind of uh, network, cloud, and connection they have in terms of, uh, uh, you know, uh, getting the business from the Saudi government. Uh, Saudi, as we know, is uh, very good in terms of uh, pharmaceutical growth, uh, primarily on account of good population. And uh, because of certain um, system changes which have been taking place, uh, uh, having a local company in Saudi uh, is entitled for more business than an import. So uh, our prime objective is that we commence with a local entity there and gradually over a period of a couple of years uh, work on seeing how we can ha establish ourselves as a manufacturing setup in the Saudi region. Uh, once we have a manufacturing setup and we are making a certain line of products, maybe uh, certain excipients or, uh, you know, uh, any ready-to-use formulations, uh, these uh, will become the prime first uh, uh, 
you know purchase option for every formulator in the saudi region and i think that should give us a very good advantage uh, because uh, the penetration at this moment uh, there is very limited uh, with uh, the jv being in place uh, i believe uh, saudi should come in as uh, one of our substantial big regions for growth thank you so the line for the parlor seven dropped we move on to the next parlor seven before that anyone who wishes to ask a question please press star and want to come in the question queue next follow up question is from the line of rajesh shain from nb investments please go ahead sir i have two question uh, the first one is regarding the, the nutrition segment uh, food and nutrition segment uh, is there any positive response we have got any customer we could uh, enroll any positive anything sir on that Uh, so uh, we we have been having a positive response from certain uh, set of customers uh, in the african region in the middle east region and uh, in in the asia pacific region uh, and also in the us region so we have been having we are only working to see which way we can have better volumes at a fair margin right now the volumes are lower uh, but we are working to see how we can have uh, regular consignments of this uh, transaction happening across these regions these uh, the transactions are intermittent and our objective is to see how we can have a regular monthly transaction uh, i'm sure you would appreciate rajesh that uh, you know we have distributors across uh, and and even end customers across uh, just about uh, all all the continents and the 60 countries that we export to so uh, adding a new portfolio of product is not really a challenge however getting the product approved from the end customer Uh, at their region uh, i think sometimes does take time uh, sometimes it does happen that you know samples don't uh, clear the way it's supposed to be as per what the customer wants and then uh, you know there is a second sample sent so all all that uh, basically uh, i believe uh, nutrition and food uh, should come in as uh, good good growth uh, over the next couple of months and definitely in the next financial year Okay, so, sir, I was under the impression that you are targeting more uh, the domestic uh, customers Uh, particularly the you know the pharma you know we we have lot of pharma food and uh, you know pharma company seen and around hyderabad so i was under the impression that you are targeting more of that uh no we are not really targeting domestic customers sir uh, in the food and nutrition our uh, of course we have customers but that's not really our focus our focus is to see how we can have bulk business Uh, across uh, the continents uh, from the distributors uh, where we have relation already so this as per you would take another you know 6 months or so maybe from fy 25 uh, things would start uh, showing uh, yes, some uh, result uh, in this segment uh, it, would be, it would become more reasonable uh, it would not really be um, uh, small intermittent volumes it would be a fair volume and i think uh, we'll be we'll be happy about it okay sir having run so far do you think the margins would be similar to the one that uh, we have existing for the uh, mcc business uh no mcc business is a very niche product we have sir uh, it okay. it would not be as per that because in mcc uh, there is a lot of value add we have we have a variety of uh, 60 different uh, grades of pre formulated excipients and basic excipients so the kind of uh, value add i due to my customer in excipients is far more than what i do in terms of food and nutrition so i believe it will not uh, be as much as what the mcc business commands okay okay understood but it is it is, i would say it is a supplementary uh, product line to have because uh, there are customers in um, the food part who consume cellulose who consume cellulose ingredient as a dietary fiber and they also need nutritional ingredient for the label claims you know there are label claims which go in as with added calcium with added zinc so offer all these label claims they take in food they take in cellulose as a uh, you know dietary fiber or a non calorific dietary fiber and they also need to take in these so it's a very complementary product for our distributors as well as the food and customers sir if my understanding is correct you would be using mcc in these products right of course of course there there are uh, there are combinations where mcc goes in as an ingredient into this forward integrated uh, formulas which go into food which go into nutrition uh, sir my second question is regarding ccs uh, as of now any other companies manufacturing this product in india 
uh, we have a, uh, a company by the name of Gujarat Microvax uh, manufacturing this product at uh, Ahmedabad. Okay. Sir, is it same as Accent Microcell Private Limited? Is it the same one? No, no, no. Accent Microcell is another company, sir. Uh, Gujarat Microvax is uh, uh, a much bigger company, and uh, they are uh, they have a joint venture with the world number two in making excipients. Okay, so that means you you are saying that there are already manufacturers for this product also. Of course, there is a manufacturer because uh, there is a demand for this product. So, so it is but natural that there would be custom, uh, there would be suppliers who would be making this product. What I speak is uh, the Gujarat Microvax is one among the predominant uh, leaders in this product uh, for for this product and is a very old player. Uh, I believe uh, they are as old as Segachi. No, no. What I meant to say is uh, currently is these two, two or three, whichever the whatever the number of companies making this product, they are able to meet the demand, or is this uh, you know CCS is being uh, imported from outside also? Uh, Rajesh, sir, this uh, CCS has a huge uh, import, and uh, that is one of the reasons that CCS is part of the complex excipient which is uh, approved under PLI. Oh, oh, okay. So, so that means uh, our uh, substantial import to be stopped, and uh, that is the reason that the PLI has been approved. In fact, Sigachi's uh, PLI, as and when uh, the uh, environmental clearance goes through, uh, we will be even eligible for the PLI under this product. We would have to apply and get it approved, but I'm sure we will have it approved. Very well, The reason for asking is, as and when we commission, there should not be any challenge in ramping up the production. That was the, you know, the question, actually. I don't see that it will be a challenge because uh, India, of course, is a good market, but uh, historically and even going forward, our focus will always be on the export markets because export markets, the realizations are better. So uh, I am I'm very sure and confident that uh, challenge there will be no challenges in terms of uh, uh, marketing or selling the new product of Cross Carmelos, CCS. It is good to hear that, sir. Sir, my, lastly, uh, it's regarding the API business. Uh, now that you have already two months, more than you know, uh, four, three or four months uh, since the acquisition. Now, whatever uh, the estimates you had or the you know uh, the potential for the company and other things, what you had planned or thought, do you feel all those things are uh, possible to achieve and the infra, whatever their uh, you know, staff, everybody is capable. You know, is it as per your, uh, you know, whatever you have thought and bought this company, is it as per your uh, you know, estimation? Uh, so it is definitely as per our estimation because we did do a lot of due diligence, uh, uh, background uh, review, uh, you know, site inspection, third-party uh, checks. All that was done. So it's definitely there. It, we only need to work out to see how do we change the track. Uh, we have had uh, the the subsidiary, the company, uh, doing its activities and operations uh, independent of Sigachi. Now what it needs to do is in, it needs to switch over to uh, the way Sigachi works. Uh, so that integration, of course, takes time. And uh, the most important thing is to align uh, as to uh, how do we work out to see that we have uh, whatever are the targeted product lines. Uh, we uh, firm up that, we firm up the chemistry, and then we have it regulatory approved from European Directorate of Quality and Medicine and, of course, the US FDA. So once that is there, uh, it will it, be a very positive step in terms of uh, bettering our uh, margins and, of course, uh, our markets. Okay. Listen, last time you had uh, you know, clearly mentioned about the, you know, the plan that you have for this company for a period of next a year or two. Uh, now, what I was trying to find out is, is all those things you feel it is possible to achieve, there are no hiccups or something. Like that. No, no, there, there, are no there are absolutely no hiccups. We have already planned for additional CAPEX investment in the subsidiary on a, uh, for increasing the capacities. So all that is on track. Uh, we are not really commencing the CAPEX right now because we would want to stabilize what is already there. And once uh, things get stable, and uh, things move, then we will start putting in the capex for the added expansion. So, but it is very much on track the way it was envisaged when we uh, kind of uh, had the acquisition done. So, so that means the, the capex, you know, the capex to expand the capacity, but that is still not started for uh, this plant. No, no, 
it has not started. We expect it to start in another three months, sir. Okay. So that means other than our uh, MCC plant at uh, the H, so other than that, uh, are we starting at Hyderabad also, the modernization of the plant or no, as of now? So modernization of the plant is a very slow and ongoing process. Uh, it is, you know, the facility remains the same, uh, you know, uh, certain technologies which have changed, uh, certain uh, water recycling systems which have come in, uh, all those things. So it, that all continues, sir. I mean, uh, I would say that uh, it is not really a start and a stop. It continues round the year. We keep changing the uh, air handling units as per what the requirements of the FDA is or whatever is the requirement of uh, any specific outside third-party audit. Uh, so it's not that uh, we are going to have a start and a stop for the Hyderabad ex uh, modernization. But uh, for a, a brownfield expansion like uh, what we had for the subsidiary of API facility, there we would have a, had a start and a stop because it will be a completely separate production block. Oh, okay, okay. So, 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 so that means for a Hyderabad plant, you will take up maybe in the next uh, this calendar year, maybe... Uh, uh, I believe it will continue. CFO, correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, I believe the expansion of the Hyderabad unit would continue on a uh, regular basis because uh, nothing will be stopped uh, because, you know, the production has to continue. So it will not really be stopped. There are no new production blocks being added. Yes. Okay. So that is a separate block. So it can be, you know, done without any interference with the, the current, you know, plant production. Yeah, absolutely. Sir, you had given us some 18 months target as and when you get the approval, you know, environment approval for the CCS. Uh, do you still stick to that 18 months? Uh, yes, very much. Very much. Uh, 18 months, uh, the moment we have the environmental clearance in place, everything else in terms of design, uh, the, the vendors, everybody is ready. We would start dishing out, uh, um, you know, purchase orders and advances for the suppliers so that things just uh, get ahead the civil vendors, everybody ha is on track. Okay. Sir, uh, just the last question that, you know, we are you know expanding into so many segments. I know a few of them are complementary, but like MCC, CCS, then food and nutrition segment, and now API. Uh, so, so do you think uh, the management has enough bandwidth to take care of all these things same, at the same time? Yes. So uh, because these are all related, uh, the management bandwidth becomes very complementary. Uh, like, uh, you know, uh, in the overall pharma ecosystem, uh, the excipients and the APIs are complementary. No uh, formulation can be made without the excipients. So an API, of course, is necessary. So it becomes complementary. Our customer base remains the same. Our pharma ecosystem of keeping a facility as per US FDA standards, having an audit, remains the same. Only thing which changes is the chemistry. So I don't see, uh, really see that uh, we need to uh, have a stretch on the management bandwidth. Uh, I, I, think, uh, I think it's a very uh, comfortable related diversification, and uh, there are a lot of industries uh, who have, in fact, uh, I would say most of the MCC manufacturers have an additional product of CCS. So uh, I, I, I believe that uh, uh, there is no real stretch on the management bandwidth uh, with these line of products. Okay. So I'm still tempted to ask you one more question. <laughs> now that you have a, a spear hand at Karnul, I hope you will not come out with some announcement for some project in that, for that line. So... Uh, uh, I, I, I very difficult to answer this, but one thing is there, sir, that, uh, you know, uh, we don't wait for a perfect situation for taking the first step. We wait, look out for opportunities and jump in into opportunities even if there is a bit of ambiguity because when the ambiguity clears and when the things are crystal clear, there will be big players who would have already been kilometers ahead of us. So the moment we see a trend, the moment we see an opportunity, the moment we see that there is something good, uh, we should take the steps up because that is how, because, you know, it is a, always a combination of risk and rewards. If we play it safe, we will probably be last in the queue. If we uh, take a bit of risk and we speed ahead, we will probably be the first among all. So we just have to work out and see uh, what is the most appropriate step to be taken in the interest of all of us. Okay, okay. Fair enough, sir. Uh, thanks for answering all my questions and wish you all the best, sir.
थैंक यू सर थैंक यू थैंक यू a reminder to all the participants you may press star and one to ask a question next question is from line of abhay jain individual investor please go ahead hi sir uh, thank you for the uh, opportunity uh, and congratulations for the great set of number uh, i only have one question uh, one question is uh, uh, re- regarding the capex of 7000 uh, mtpa you said that uh, in the previous call that uh, 10% of the capex will kick in in q3 and the 25% in q4 so are we sticking to the same guidance so uh, i believe that this 10% might uh, not really come in we are uh, in the process of erection and commissioning by the time the erection and commissioning gets complete uh, i think we would be at the fag end of q3 so uh, the commissioning and subsequent sales uh, would then thereafter reflect in the q4 so uh, in the q4 i believe a 25% uh, of uh, uh, the capex would be a fa- i mean the uh, added capacity would be a fair figure to target at this moment thank you so much for the clear answer sir thank you mr yes, thank you thank you a reminder to all the participants you may press star and one to ask a question Next question is from Madhur Madhurathi from Counter Technical Investments. Please go ahead. Sir, I just wanted to understand where do we see our business going in the next three to five years? So, uh, Mr. Madhur, if um, you are indicating in terms of uh, um, geographies, customer base, product lines, or uh, the industries, sir, in general, as well as uh, in financial terms, as well as in general, like. Uh, as you highlighted that we are focusing on pharma right now so what are the growth drivers will be uh, for the uh, financial metric that we can achieve or we have targets for the next 3 to 5 years okay so 3 uh, to 5 years uh, of course uh, the pharma vertical would continue to be our backbone of the growth uh, we would continue to uh, um, invest further into capacities uh, into uh, related product lines into uh, facilities uh, to be able to you know have an at least uh, 25% uh, top line growth over the next 3 to 5 years uh, all other complementary verticals like uh, food and nutrition uh, would have their fair share of growth um, on the operation and management part i believe uh, we should see some good business in terms of uh certain joint ventures which we have signed with uh, international parties uh, over the last one two months so uh, i uh, what in summary i would indicate that uh, uh, i am looking at at least a 25% uh, growth year on year uh, over the next 3 to 5 years uh, thank you sir and uh, do will we see our margins improving uh, when we uh, go to this related product and provide and become a bigger part of the value chain so uh, i definitely do see my margins improving in uh, the api space uh, after we have uh, the regulatory certifications and the audits done uh, because uh, okay. that should be a possibility and that should reflect on our total margins as well uh, okay thank you sir that was very helpful and sir just one bookkeeping question sir our other current liabilities have increased to 115 crore so uh, could you explain me why is that Madhur, may I request you to mute your line from your side, please? Uh, well, sir, you could uh, maybe unmute and speak up on this on the current uh, liabilities. Uh, sir, the other current liabilities uh, for the H1 have increased from uh, 9.4 crores to 118 crores. So that's what I was asking about. Sir, uh, page number 13 of our present investor presentation. Page number. Uh, can you please? So twelve. Page number twelve of our investor presentation. Other current liabilities. Uh, uh, yeah. 
Yeah, Mr. Madhu. Uh, this one, no? uh, anyway, that is uh, already, uh, there is an increase in uh, non-current liabilities, it is mentioned, and uh, uh, borrowings are there. Borrowings, uh, uh, borrowings uh, 18, uh, that is uh, 10 to 18, 8 crores, that is increased. And uh, there is a lease liability is there. As per the accounting standard, we need to uh, accumulate uh, all the lease holdings for the entire uh, lease period uh, because that is uh, one of the reason so that is a small change and when we see it uh, there is a total other uh, liabilities there is an uh, 94 uh, here uh, it is already it is given uh, the borrowings is a major uh, factor 39 to it is increased to 51 that is because uh, the top line also it is increased, the working capital that is increased. That is the major uh, reason. And also the trade payables, okay, anyway, here uh, uh, there is a small uh, change here on lower side only it is there. Earlier it was uh, in uh, FI23, it was 20.8 uh, crores, now 16.5 crores. And uh, the other uh, current liabilities, uh, 94 to uh, around... Uh, 9.42, 11 uh, 11.83 is there. That is a major uh, reason. Yeah, Mr. Madhu. Hello. So the line for the final seven dropped. A reminder to all the participants, you may press star and one to ask a question. As there are no further questions, I will now hand the conference over to the management for closing comments. Uh, thank you all for participating in this earnings con call. I hope we answered your questions satisfactorily and at the same time offered insight into our business. If you have any further questions or want to know more about the company, uh, please do get in touch with our investor relations managers at Valorum Advisors. Thank you. Stay safe, stay healthy, and enjoy the Indian team play at the World Cup. Thank you. Thank you so thank you. much. Thank you all. Thank you. On behalf of Sigachi Industries Limited, that concludes this conference. Thank you for joining us. You may now disconnect your lines. Thank you.